Well, this person that I'm going to talk about um, was a little bit younger than me. He was someone who always seemed happy when he was in front of you. But you always got this idea that he really didn't know where he fit in. Because he didn't fit in. He was somewhat talented. If you were doing something and you needed help, asking him was always a good idea because he learned really quick he may have not done well in most cases he hadn't done anything before like it he worked down to my grandmother's horse farm and um the the uh yeah the head of the horse farm liked him he wasn't real dependable though he had problems with well, see, I don't even know whether he drank. I just know that he didn't show up. You know, I didn't ever see him get really trashed. Um, but he was fun to be around. And uh, and I can tell you that uh, one of the... I got to know him because his brother... Um, well, I got to know him because of the farm and because his brother was in my grade. Um, so, anyway, just to give you a few of the stories. One time I'm painting a car at my parents' house. And it's a hot day. Um, and he comes in. and uh, um, Every so often he would just stop in. In fact, I even tried to fix his car up but he ended up wrecking it before I got it done and I was glad because I really lost interest in it I which was unfortunate that I can admit that to be honest with you that's not a good thing on my part but it would have looked pretty cool I had some really wild paint for it even though it was just going to be white but it was going to be a pearl white with a rainbow metal flake sprayed over top it was going to look nice it was going to be a good a good car and it was good anyway um he came in and we were talking about you know wish we had some beer and uh i didn't have any money and he didn't have any money <laughs> but he says why well, he says i'll be back now usually when he said he'll be back you didn't really count on it because he just you just know, you know, he would find somebody or something would get in his mind and he was off and going in another direction, you know. Well, he came back and he had a case of beer. Now, he told me, I, I guess it was while we were drinking, I finally found out that he actually stole it from his father's restaurant. <laughs> Oh, I know how a guy found out about that is, is first off, the beer was hot. And I mean actually hot. It had, and I wondered why a case of beer would be hot. And he explained to me it was out in the storage shed of his father's restaurant. It wasn't in the cooler because he didn't think he could sneak something out of there. So, all right, that's the way it is. Well, guess what kind of beer it was? It was Heineken Dark. <laughs> now, that's when it's hot, I mean, the beer's hot. That's like drinking molasses, especially when you get down to the bottom of them. I mean, by then, the, the beer's so. Oh, man. But believe it or not, we sat there on the front lawn of my parents' house and drank that whole damn case. <laughs> Another time, he, he's, he was someone who, I don't know whether he's claustrophobic or whether he just couldn't stand hot weather. 
but he would always have the window down on his car always and um, he would drive around even when it was raining with the window down and every once in a while well two or three times he took me for rides up into the mountains his grandfather lived up in the Appalachian Mountains and he kind of knew the area but he really didn't care he would just drive anyway sooner or later he'd find a road that he knew and he knew how to get back then so one night we're up there riding around and um, we get down to a road and it is a road it's marked that has grass growing up in the middle of it and of course it's dirt <laughs> but grass growing up in the middle of it we go up and I can see this shack and I can actually see a light bulb hanging inside the shack through the cracks in the boards. It's not even, you know, you might say light tight. Um, and we pass it and he stops and he starts wondering now, should I go? what should I you know he says where am I at? and he's he's all he's really just at a dead stop trying to decide what to do whether to go forward or back up and go back get back off of this well here lights come on in all the trees and now at a construction site you'll see just regular light bulbs screwed into a, a wire that's just every so often there's a light bulb well, that's just what this was, hanging in the trees. <laughs> and then he says, I think we better get out of here. <laughs> so he's, and he pointed it out to me, he says, it's not unusual for him when he's hunting up in there to come across a still. Somebody's, you know, and he said, if you come across a still, you just keep on going. He says, because somebody's watching it. Well, when it's running somebody's watching it from a tree somewhere or whatever and you don't want to mess with it now i'll tell you something else about him he was a redneck he through and through i mean he wore cowboy boots he he had the cowboy hat a lot of times and things like that and uh he even uh was in bull riding um in the rodeo some that was kind of the one thing that he got into was the rodeo but we called him a redhead well sort of it was kind of true it was, he had like strawberry blonde or whatever hair it was more red than you know it was more almost an orange type color and all that but we didn't call it but even though that description of him uh, fit we called him a redhead because he was a redneck and he smoked pot so he was a head and he was a redneck so we called him a redhead and he liked that that was his he liked that identification I learned something off of him without him actually deliberately trying to teach me something. I'm working on his father's truck mounting a new snow blade on it for him. And I'm struggling with what method I should use to attach this thing to the frame. I don't like my designs. I, I come up and I keep going back to the same stupid one and I can't get it out of my head and he comes into my shop and of course I'm happy to see him and things like that and we don't none of my friends do he said and just bullshit I mean we'd rather sit there and dr just you know drink beer or just stare at each other than to talk about the weather or who's doing what to who so I'm telling him what's going on with his father's truck and and he's looking at it and says well how about if you do so and so and so and so well 
based on how I understood he said it to me, his idea would not work. Would not. And so I kind of, at first, wanted to tell him how stupid he was. But I didn't say that. Uh, but I did think about what he was saying and, and trying to visualize it. And because his idea was so out there, it's like it unlocked my mind. And I started being able to see other ways to attack this problem. And all of a sudden, there's the answer. Out of nowhere. So you can learn something from somebody even when they're not trying to teach you anything and even when they're wrong. What he was explaining to me would not have worked, but it unlocked my mind. And that's what happens a lot of times um, if you listen to people. You got to really listen to what they say. Uh, Jordan Peterson, I, I watched a video that was about him, not, um, not him talking so much. And it pointed out that he genuinely listens to the other person's view. He's not afraid to admit that he understands and in some cases agrees with their view. So I took that as an example of saying, okay, you're, you're on the right track as well. In other words, I'm on the right track as well when I do listen to people. You have to listen. And then you have to wonder how they came up with it. And all those things help you to better understand what you're thinking about and how it pertains um, to what you're trying to accomplish. So anyway, this is the kind of person he was with me. And I, you know, liked being around him. Whenever I saw him, it was time to party, you might say. And, uh, but I'm, like I said, he, um, he never fit in. He never found his place. And, um, he finally committed suicide. Now, I didn't think that he would go that far. I knew that somehow I knew that he did somehow I knew he knew that he didn't fit in that he wasn't you know somebody that was normal which is kind of the case with anybody that I can relate to or that I enjoyed being around um, they pretty much had to be outsiders and he was one as well he um I know I got one more story about him, but for some reason, um, okay, I finally remembered it. I'm glad I didn't forget this story. I told you about him always having a window down on his car. In fact, I would, when I'd ride around with him, I would constantly be asking him to put it up, and he would put it up for a while, and then he'd wind it back down, and I'd freeze my ass off. One night, uh, he wasn't along. We were in a guy's van and we were partying and it was snowing and more or less, it wasn't as much snow, but blowing everywhere and drifting. And we were out heading towards the back road where we would party. Now, the guy that was driving the van, we didn't realize it, but he had taken a hit of acid, so he was having himself a good old time. And we're all in the back of his van and and getting smoked up and everything else. And then we're heading to this dirt. Well, we're actually, we get to the dirt road. And traveling down the dirt road, of course, that means we're out in the middle of fields. And there's a big open area. And this one drift had blown across the, the road. And it was enough that he should have known we weren't going to get through it <laughs> but he didn't care he just drove he plowed right into that thing 
and of course we got hung up now at first we didn't care so we're out there and um and uh we then want think that you know what we're gonna have to get somebody to help us out so i don't remember exactly how it all happened but we saw a guy coming from the other direction on this dirt road and he was coming through the woods so back in the woods there was no no drifts or anything like that and yet he did pop through a couple drifts but then he decided to stop but i me and another guy or whatever uh started hollering for him so they waited and we walked over there and told him our situation and they ended up taking me back so that i could um get our um 47 dodge power wagon and come pull them out well this is all at night time of course so anyway they go back up the road it was just like a chevette or a, i mean it was a little car and they took me to my parents house dropped me off and um i couldn't get the truck started because it was so damn cold out it was seriously cold but I thought, well, I can take my parents' station wagon and pile everybody in it. That doesn't get the van out, but at least it gets it, you know, gets them. I um, get back there, and somebody else must have stopped or something ran into us, and they said they were going for um, this guy, the brother that I knew that was in my grade. We were gonna, they were going to go get him and get his because he was out plowing snow and in his father's truck so he would probably come get us and tow us out so all right we got a plan so i just left our car my parents station wagon sit there and i started partying again i ain't giving it up i'm not going home and we're talking about this guy and then that means we start talking about my friend the redhead and um we start making a joke that he finally had to put his coat on because it's so damn cold out and it was cold and um so we see lights coming from behind us and we know that's him in the truck and uh, of course we don't know that my friends along with him and uh his brother in other words and you know we're like i said we're all smoked up and all that and here the door comes on the van comes sliding open and there's my friend in the cowboy hat and a vest <laughs> and he says boys he says it's a bit burr out there tonight <laughs> And we all started laughing because we had been talking about him and and there he was and no he did not have a coat on. <laughs> so just kind of to finish the story they hooked to the van and when they started towing it out it slid off into the ditch and there's a row of um, wooden fence posts there. The guy didn't care. He just started bouncing his van off of them and drug it out and away we went. So my friend dies. He takes and um, he's living in a nice house. His father kind of built it for him, um, hoping to help him out. He just closes the garage door and starts his car and sits there and passes out it's a shame i mean he was he was talented he um was enjoyable to be around i mean i have other stories and had a flat tire on my car and he had sort of a girlfriend and the three of us walked i don't know how many miles it was a lot to go home to get a, a spare because I took it out of the trunk because it would kept landing on top of my coolers and breaking them. <laughs> what? Anyway, didn't bother him. He didn't care. He 
never criticized me or anything like that. I don't know that he ever criticized anybody. I don't know that he even talked about anybody um, in a negative way at all. Um, it's just a shame. He had something to offer to the world, but the world didn't appreciate it, and and he didn't feel like he belonged, so out of the blue, he just takes and ends it all. So, and unfortunately, this is going to be a reoccurring theme with the, a lot of the people that influenced me. So... Talk to you next time.